happy ending. And um, this is a story this morning that modern day psychologists and psychiatrists uh, just could not handle. It's o over their head, out of their realm, because they, most of them do not allow for the supernatural or, or uh, spirits, good or bad. They believe that everything is natural and that there is no realm outside of our own minds and our own heart and our own body. In the Bible, there is a physical realm and there is a spiritual realm. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Mark chapter 5. Follow me with reading the Word of God. And I want to tell you a story. And I'm going to call this story this morning From Maniac to Missionary. From Maniac to a Missionary. And that means if this boy can get it, so can you today. Look at Mark chapter 5, verse number 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. That'd be a demon or what we'd call a demon, devil, in the Bible. The word demon's not in the Bible, but we call them that uh, because of the, the, the usage of that word over the years. But I won't take time to go into all of that. But anyway, the man had an unclean devil inside him. So that automatically takes about 90% of counseling, psychiatry, psychology, and all of these studies, that they postgraduate studies that they do on human nature, and knocks them out of the door. They don't have a clue of what's going on. There is no pill you give somebody for this. There is no medicine that man conjures up or a drug that can help this kind of person. Verse number 3, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. That's that superhuman strength we preached about a few weeks ago. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, the demons are messing with you when you can't get your days and nights to right. You get days and nights mixed up. Stay up all night, sleep all day. That's demonic. That's not of God. It's not. It's, it's proven over and over and over. He was in the mountains. That means third shifts of the devil. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Cutting yourself of the devil too. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Isn't that strange? We'll talk about more of that in a minute. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? He said, I adjure thee that by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. You see, Jesus had already told this guy, Get out of it. And the devil spoke back to Jesus. So you say, all them movies that where the devil's talking out of somebody and back to the priest, he's always got a cross or throwing, throwing holy water on them or something. There's no such thing as that in the Bible. You don't do like this to them. You don't throw holy water on them. All that's a Catholic made-up junk. Uh, try to make you think that's a way to get rid of demons. That's not the way Jesus did it. Jesus just walked up and said, scat, buddy. And, and they had to leave. And verse... And verse uh, uh, verse 8, he said, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion. That's a bunch. For we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now look at this, verse 11. The story even gets more strange. Now there was there nigh under the mountains a great herd of of swine feeding. A bunch of pigs. 2,000 of them, the Bible tells us. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Now, I've got to stop there just a second. Keep your finger on verse 13. This man's got so many demons in him. Listen to me. There's 2,000 pigs over here on the hillside and a, on a, and a farm on a big hill. And they said, We've got to leave. We like this guy. 
He watches MTV every night. He smokes pot. We like living here. And Jesus said, no, go. And they said, well, if we've got to go, can we get in them pigs? That means people got something living in them that the pig is second choice. And it make a pig commit hogicide. Uh, as soon as they went into them pigs, the Bible said they run down a steep place and into the dr- sea and drown themselves. That's the first case in the Bible of deviled ham. And they went there, and the Bible said, they went down there. You know what they said one time? They said, uh, a, a farmer said, he said, you can't make a pig run down a hill. If you live in the mountains, you, you, you can get that. If you fly. They said, pigs are so heavy up here and their nose so big, when they bump it on roots and stuff. Pigs always turn and run up a hill. So you know what pigs do when they get demon-possessed? Opposite of what they normally do. That's what's wrong. That explains what's wrong with some of you people and some church members I know of. That's why you act. That's why God said go this way and you go that way. Uh, You're messing with the devil and he's in control of you. Now, 13. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran down violently a steep place into the sea. And they were, uh, went down and got baptized. They were about 2,000 and choked in the sea. They said, uh, they said the demons uh, didn't drown. The hogs drowned. The demons come out soaking wet on the other side, stuck up the sign and said, Water saves. The Church of Christ needs here. And they kept going around. They're still out somewhere today. I'm telling you this morning, those demons are still active in the world somewhere this morning. This, and verse number 14 said, They that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And when they went out to see what it was that was done, and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting, straightened up, didn't he? He wasn't running around, all, couldn't behave. Clothed. You know, another scripture it said he was naked. That's another sign of demon possession. Taking your clothes off in public in front of people is a sign of demon possession. Spring break. You don't have to go nearly naked to go out and enjoy the, the, the water. You ain't going to drown. All right? Verse number 15 said, they see him sitting, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They should have been afraid for that. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. And also concerning the swine. Listen to this prayer. And they begin to pray him to depart out of their coast. <laughs> this is their prayer. Lord, please leave. Uh, that's about smart, ain't it? Uh, verse 18. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. That old boy knew what was right. He wanted to go with the Lord. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. I'm preaching on the subject, maniac to missionary. From maniac to missionary. One proof of and one of the most amazing things about the gospel is the power that it has to change a person's life. One of the most sure proofs the gospel is real and true is the power. The Bible said we preach the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It can reach way down, people. And you don't have a family member, you don't have a cousin, you don't have a brother or a sister that the gospel can't reach and help. I want to tell you this morning, no matter how bad off your brother is or your mom or dad or anybody else, the Lord can reach them if, if you'll let him and pray for them. His illustration has his power over disease. He has power over death. And he has power over demon. You know, a lot of people don't even believe in... in uh, you fool around that stuff, listen to those messages they, they preach on rock music and stuff. Those people profess to be demon-possessed. I've got quotes of one right after another, after another, after another that say, when I get on stage, I get possessed. Beyonce, quote, she said, I lifted up my hands and I felt something come into me. And after that, she could perform in front of thousands and thousands of people. They even realize, they don't know what it is, but it's a possession of a spirit. They said, uh, old Charles Manson, 
They said when Charles Manson walked in the courtroom back in the early 70s, late whenever they was trying him, that the clocks on the wall would stop. That's not the first time you've heard that. Well, there's there's uh, the story of Dr. Jack Hudson down there in Charlotte when they, they had this guy, uh, girl, woman who was demon-possessed who called him and he said she wanted to counsel with him. And the preacher said, she always told She said, I've got a spirit in me. And it was obvious that she did. And Dr. Hudson said he had a nice, like a brand new watch. And he said every time he talked to that girl, his watch stopped. If she was in his office 20 minutes, his watch stopped 20 minutes. She didn't know Charles Manson. Charles Manson didn't know her. And they say there's been pilots of jet airlines and jumbo jets who have got, who have, they've lost track of them on radar and they went into some kind of something in the atmosphere and they said if it was 10 minutes, pop, they popped back up on radar and when they got to land, the pilot, the stewardess, and everybody on there had lost that same amount of time on their watch. Sort of weird, huh? So whatever it is was in Charles Manson. And whatever it was in that girl is the same thing. All those UFO stories, when they're around, people's watch stop, motor stop. I know of people, I've been told by several people, so-and-so can come in the room and turn lights off and on just by concentrating. You say, well, that's the power of the mind. Uh, okay, well, put some money in your pocket then if that's the power of your mind. Yeah. I mean, uh, pay the mill, straighten out the problems in the world. That's not the power of the mind. I can sit here and believe that microphone is Hillary all day long. And it don't, it ain't Hillary. It looks a lot better. But it, it's, uh, uh, it, it ain't going to change. Not one bit. I can sit here, I can believe all day long that my bills are paid and concentrate and tie myself up in a knot, meditate and twiddle my thumb. It ain't going to pay one bill. That's supernatural. There's, that's demonic power. That's an outside force. Ladies and gentlemen, that did that. Now, I know a lot of, not of astrology and stuff like that, most of it. Right? It's fake. Somebody won't to make money reading your palms. You know, they say you got a scratch right there. Oh, that means uh, that you're going to inherit. Now, that's a bicycle wreck when I was about 11. Uh, no. Oh, this scar over here, that means. That, I know a lot of that stuff's fake. So this guy had a rabbit's foot one time. God put that on and he said, well, look here what I got, buddy. He said, that rabbit's foot, that'll bring me good luck. And the fellow said it didn't bring the rabbit much good luck. Uh, and so most of that stuff's junk. Most of that stuff is fake. Most of that stuff is just foolishness. But I'm telling you, the stuff that they put in Hollywood movies and the stuff that goes on in a lot of these places and hospitals and jails and these, this flock of drug I preach about, that's not joke, people. It's reality. The person is possessed by an evil spirit. The Bible tells us this man was. Four things about him quickly, and we'll go. Number one, the maniac. The maniac. This, you could describe him no other way than a complete maniac. Nobody could tame him. Nobody could bind him. They tried to, they tried to send him to reform school. It didn't work. They sent him to rehab. It didn't work. He broke chains. He had supernatural strength. They put chains around him. Isn't that pitiful? Well, these men chained him up, and he'd just go, pop, throw them off. I've got it on video where some of them guys, after taking that drug flocka, they had five or six grown men on them, and they'd knock them off like that right there. Take four or five men to hold them down in the bed. Where does that strength come from? You say, well, they're adrenaline. Your adrenaline don't flow that fast. Wow. Not to knock off six grown men. The cops tased the guy and stuck him in that thing. He jerked it out and took the cop's badge off and cut the cop with his own badge. That supernatural strength. This man was a maniac. And what we need to realize this morning is a lot of what you're seeing on TV and all of these monster, you know, these games your kids like, they always got monsters and demons and all these trying to take over. You better be careful of what you allow in your home. You better be careful of uh, the music you play, the, the movies you watch and all that. And if you got it, you're a, that's an entrance way to the wrong kind of spirit. Life if you want to. Think it's a joke if you want to. You'll be sorry one day. This man was a maniac. This man was a maniac. Ladies and gentlemen, like that woman in the book of Acts, 
she followed after the, Paul and the apostles and said, These men are the great power of God. That's another sign. A person who's demon-possessed are, are very religious. They're always interested in the Bible. And they're always interested in Jesus Christ. Now, they don't know the Lord and they're not saved, but they're, they're drawn towards Him. And every... You know why that is? It'd be the same as if you left these doors open tonight and left that one light on right there in the middle that shines on this pulpit, bugs are attracted to that light. And those bugs, you know what a mosquito and a fly and all that stuff, that's a picture of things you can't see. Everything you can see is a picture of something you can't see in the spiritual world. And those bugs are attracted to that light. A bug will fly in that door, there's a light. They, 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 uh, they are drawn toward it. And that's why those demon-possessed people are always talking about the Bible and God and Jesus and stuff. The Bible said when he saw this man, he had, he had enough demons in him to fill up 2,000 hogs, and when he saw Jesus, he fell down and worshipped him. That's, that's amazing. That Bible's some book. Ain't it that some book you got laying there? There ain't another book in the world that tells a story like that right there. I mean, it's always, get out of here, my head's spinning around, and my eyes pop out, and kill the free. No, they run and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the marks of a heathen. The marks of the heathen are extremely religious. They paint their bodies. Go to any heathen country in the world. They cut themselves. They pierce themselves a lot. And they are extremely religious. The maniac. Number two, notice his misery. Oh, the misery of sin. That man wasn't happy. Can you imagine out there in the tombs at night and somebody here, ah! Like that, and they look out there and he'd come back down and he'd have blood running down his arm where he took a rock and just went like that right there. I've seen people like that recently. I talked to a lady in this town the other day and she had marks, 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 where she cut and cut and cut. One of them got that on there the other day and told them uh, she had to go take a drug test or something, Tom's got bee sting. Just happened to got bee sting right there. I, I talked to one yesterday that done the same thing. The misery that sin brings. Young people, this morning, you can pick up something in your life. It'll not make you happy. That stuff ain't going to make you happy. The more the devil takes over your life, the more miserable you'll be. Living for the devil won't make you happy. It'll make you just a slave. It often leads to depression and suicidal thoughts. How many times have we heard somebody's testimony and they'll say, I went sin, I drank, I partied, I lived for the devil and I wound up down yonder one night with a pistol in my head and get ready to end it all. That's where it winds up. That's where it goes up. Suicide. Suicide. You see, the devil came to the Lord one time and Job was prospering and the devil said, why don't you let me have him for a little bit? And God said, all right, you can, you can get his stuff, but don't you touch him. And you know he lost all that stuff. I ain't got time to tell that whole story. Then the devil come back and he said, yeah, skin for skin. He'll cuss you if you'll let me touch him. And the Lord said, all right, you can touch him, but you can't kill him. And the devil went back and Job got bulls and everything. And then finally, I mean, the devil had to get permission to do all of that. But a lot of people today are just letting the devil take over their lives. There may be somebody here this morning. There's no telling where you was at last night, what you was doing, what you was looking at on that Internet. I'm telling you, the Bible said the light of the body is the eye. And what you let go in your eyes and ears uh, reflects the condition of your soul this morning. And you can get your in a mess that will cause you to commit suicide before it's over with. Amen? Notice the misery of the man. Number three, notice the miracle. Notice the miracle. Hallelujah. People could not believe it when this man... Bible said they were afraid. They were in amazement. Can you imagine that? People could not believe it. There was a move of the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ went to him. There was a move of the sinner... He stood there and come the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a move of Satan. Those demons said, uh, uh, let us go into the, the pigs over here. And there was a move of the swine. And the swine went down the road, a uh, hill, and jumped in the sea and committed suicide. Ladies and gentlemen, what about that? What about that story? What about that story? You say, Brother Danny, you mean to tell me that that man that broke chains out there in the tombs crying at night full of demons got saved? He got saved. It was a miracle. Now, it's a miracle when anybody gets saved. 
It's a miracle when a five-year-old gets saved. It's a miracle when a papa or mama gets saved. Sometimes we think, boy, that guy was a drug dealer. It's a miracle when anybody gets saved. It was a miracle when you got saved. It was a miracle when I got saved. But boy, it really stands out when this guy's over here saying, Kids, get away from him, get away from him, get away from him. You can't, go, you can't go around him. You can't go around that boy. Get away from him. He's crazy. He's crazy. In Biggie's eyes, you could tell it. People are naturally afraid of him. And then one day you see him, and there he goes walking down the street with his Bible, going to one of them meetings. He might have knocked on your door. And wanted to witness to you. You think that wasn't a miracle? You say, Brother Danny, my daddy is mean as the devil. Is there any hope for him? Oh, yeah. yeah. My God specializes yeah. in things impossible. Yeah. Think back before you got saved. Some of you wasn't yeah. exactly St. Peter, brother. Amen. And I wasn't either. I was mean as a snake. I didn't get into drugs. I never did do nothing like that. Alcohol, drugs, nothing like that ever. I'll tell you, I was mean as a snake. And I should have been in hell. And when I got saved, people were afraid. They said, oh my. I mean, they said, I can't believe it. I, my uncle came by the house the next morning. He said, I just heard about Danny. And he, could, he couldn't believe it. He could not believe it. And that's the way it was. It was a miracle. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, If any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Drop, dropped his chains. Yeah. Dropped his dope. Yeah. Dropped his uh, 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 wickedness. Yeah. Got rid of his uh, uh, pornography. Got rid of all that. Yeah. Got him a Bible. Shaved. Walked down the street. And they saw him going to church. They went, oh my uh, Something's weird about that. He's faking. He's an infiltrator. Well, we can't trust him. He probably works for somebody. He's in no, They didn't believe it. But thank God the old boy really got saved. I read the story. You ain't going to believe this story, but mission, a preacher told this story on a mission. A lot of stuff happens on the mission field that don't happen here in America because of our unbelief. Now, I heard, read a story. This lady was a deep, strong, committed Christian. I mean, she loved God in, in deep South Africa. And I mean, you know, in a lot of those places, when they're right, they're right. And I mean, buddy, she loved the Lord, and her husband was mean. They, he hated God. He hated church. He hated the Bible. He hated his wife for going to church. And, and the, the story said that he would cuss her, and he, would, he, and he finally made up his mind he's going to kill her. He said, I'm going to kill her. So here's what he'd done to justify it. In that part of the world, you could, if, if she'd done something really bad, you could kill her or have her, have her killed. And, and the story went, he's, he was coming home from work one day, worked at the bank, and he took his a set of keys to the bank and the house and dropped them in the Nile River. And he said, I'm going to get home, and tomorrow I'm going to tell her I can't find my keys and I'll bring up this accusation against her, and I'll have her killed, and I'll be rid of her, and ain't going to be no more God and Bible and church at my house. And she just kept praying, Oh, God, God, get on my house. She prayed for him every day and lived right and had God's power on her. It was like God and the devil. Have you ever lived in the house where it was God and the devil? I know a lot of you have. And buddy, it's just a fight. I mean, you've walked around and prayed, and you walked around, and the devil's there, and God's there, and the devil's there, and God's there, and the devil's there, and God's there, and the devil's there, and God's there. I talked to a lady yesterday, and she told me, she said, things come up over my bed. I'll tell you the rest of the story in a second. She said, things come over my bed and dark figures at night. And I said, that's a devil and the Lord fighting over you, girl. I said, you better make up your mind what you're going to do and get your heart right with God. And this, that old boy, he dropped him keys in the Nile River. He went on over there. He, he, he went home that night. And the next day he got up. He was getting ready to kill her. And she went grocery shopping the day that, that, that evening. And they, she went down to the market. They buy the market, that fresh market fish, got uh, some, some fish and took it home. She had a great big Nile uh, uh, giant perch. And as she was cutting that perch open to prepare dinner, his keys were inside that fish. 
and she pulled them out. She said, that beats anything. What? Some of you sitting there like you don't believe that. I'm just telling you what the man said. He's a missionary. And he said, His, you, that happened in the Bible, you know. Peter told, The Lord told Peter to go, and a fish swallowed money and got it out. So he does do stuff like that. And she got them keys and went and hung them on the nail where he always hung his keys. And he was going to go in there. He come in that next morning. He said, where's my keys, woman? She said, they're hanging in there where they always are. He said, they better be. He's going to come back in and have her kill him. He looked, and there they was. And he knew he'd dropped them in the river the day before. And that old boy got under conviction. He thought, I'm going crazy. I've lost my mind. God must, and got saved. It was a miracle. It was a miracle. I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, we still serve a miracle working God today. God's still able to work miracles. Glory to God, that excites me to death. I'm telling you this morning, I'm glad He's still on the throne. How about you? Woo! Hallelujah. I'm glad for the miracle. And now the missionary. Boy, he became a missionary. He started telling all his friends about the Lord and departed to Decapolis and told him. He wanted everybody to know Jesus. People scared of him. To whom much is forgiven, the same love of the Lord. Like Paul. Paul went down there, rode to Damascus, bam! The Lord struck him down. He wound up preaching the faith that he once destroyed. Maniac to missionary. That's, that's, that's a broad spectrum, brother. I'm telling you, maniac to missionary. Here's where most of your kin folks are, in here in the middle somewhere. You say, boy, my daddy, he ain't no further off, worse off than this guy was. You say, my mama, brother Danny, there's no hope. For she ain't worse than this guy was. Do they put chains around her and she breaks the chains and stays in the graveyard all night cutting herself? I know a few that do stuff like that. Uh, uh, but I tell you what, God put that story in the Bible. If he can do it for that boy, he can do it for your cousin. He can do it for that boy, he can do it for your uncle. He can do it for that boy, he can do it for your mama, your grandpa. God can do it, the missionary. I'll tell you this story and I'm through. Jacob Koshi lived in the country, city of Singapore. He did drugs. He lived wicked. He partied. He became a leader, a drug lord, over a large organization of drug dealers back around 1980. He wound up in prison. And Jacob was in prison. All his goals, all his ambitions, all his dreams were down the train, down the drain, shot, gone. Can you imagine being a drug dealer, living the high life, limousines, wine, women's song, everything you want, and then he winds up sitting in jail with nothing. That's where the devil will wind you up. He'll promise you everything. It ain't going to last long, and then you pay the cost. And Ladies and gentlemen, that old boy, he sat there in jail that day, and he was a heavy smoker, and he, they, they could smuggle, they could smuggle tobacco in, but he didn't have no papers, and he'd take the Bible that was in there and roll that stuff up and smoke that tobacco, them Bible pages. That's how wicked he was. And he smoked tobacco, rolled up the Bible pages. And one morning he woke up, and his cigarette there hadn't burned all the way down, and looked, and there was just a little piece of paper. And on that paper was a part of a scripture that said, Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? Bam! Hit him in the heart. Bam! Just bang! You know, and boy, just like the Apostle Paul, that dart stuck in his heart. And he said, uh, can y'all get me another one of them Bibles? Is there any more? And they got him another. And he started reading that thing. And he read it. And he read it. And he read it. And he read it. And he couldn't stop crying. He started crying. Couldn't quit. And he got saved. And he started witnessing to other prisoners. He got into church. He met and married a nice Christian lady and served God and is now a missionary in the Far East telling people how to get saved every single week. Maniac to missionary. Maniac 
to missionary. I don't care how far you've gone. I don't care what you've done. The Lord Jesus Christ can help you today. When they were singing that song a while ago, I've been through enough to know. Man, it just shot through my soul. A glory bolt a while ago. If you missed that, Lord have mercy. I've been through enough to know he's going to take care of me. He's on his throne this morning, people. I don't know who in here needs help, but I hope and pray you're man enough to get out of your seat and walk down here to this altar and say, Lord, I've been, I'm a mess. Make something out of me. Take my life. I'm giving it to you. Let's stand. Let's stand by our head and pray. Every head bowed. Every head bowed and every eyes bowed.